Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net. I'm Chris. And we've also got joining us today Corey Levitan. He's from Las Vegas. And the three of us are going to have a chat to you all today. How are you, Corey? Hey, I'm great. What about me? How are you, Chris? I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> so, Luke. Corey's great, Chris is fine, and it's very hot here in Brisbane. And, we've, and Chris is in... It's a, freezing here. i got a blanket. <laughs> Chris is in Osaka in Japan, and you said it was, what, 6 degrees Celsius there? It says 6 degrees Celsius, but it's snowing, so it's obviously either colder or miracle snow. <laughs> and it's actually raining in Las Vegas, so the world is definitely ending based on this weather report. <laughs> wow. And in Brisbane, it's so hot. I just keep spraying myself with some water spray, so... And well, it's... Like afternoon. Uh, what's the average rainfall in Las Vegas? What's the average rainfall? I think about like two or three is. inches a year. Do you, how many days rain do you get? Uh, this would be the day. Wow. <laughs> so, Corey's, Corey's joining Chris and myself. So, Chris and I, hopefully you heard our first podcast a couple of weeks ago. And um, this will be our second one. And Corey um, lives in Las Vegas, as I said, and he writes for Men's Health. You can see quite a few of his um, articles at menshealth.com. And he writes mostly about women, sex, and (laughs) various other things. I saw your um, recent article about taking your wife to the porn awards. How was that, Corey? Is that what this is about? (laughs) No. Um, how was that? Um, uh, I'm still married, surprisingly. It was, it was actually, it was actually pretty healthy for our marriage. It was, uh, it was pretty eye-opening. I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. It was, it was a, it was a pretty wild trip. You can, 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 I, can I ask a couple of questions about the Porn Awards? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, like with the internet, and obviously, like they're not selling videos or DVDs anymore. How do they get the money? Yeah. Who pay? Who pays for it? Yeah, the people who attend the awards, they pay these outrageous prices just to go to their convention. It costs a hundred dollars a person per day. Whoa! And wow. they, well, I mean, they go there, and I, I don't know what they're expecting to, uh, like, some orgy or something. It's just a bunch of really old fat people selling like sex toys, <laughs> mm. and then they have the lines for the porn stars, uh, you know, uh, uh, to give autographs, and you have to pay for that too. So I, I think that's where all the money's coming from. Oh, and wow. I think all the merchandise that comes from it as well. I've heard that's quite lucrative for some porn stars. Yeah, they have their they they take casts of their uh, body parts. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, for thank you for um, fleshlight is the most popular one. Mm-hmm. So you could you could actually pretend that you have some chance at ever being with a woman, <laughs> and it, it, not only that, but the woman that you actually you know want to be with, which or, is nice for some people. It's like make a well, who wants to be with a porn star anyway. Well, I, I think I'd rather be with a, uh, a plastic mold of a porn star to tell you the truth. There's no, no chance of, uh, of an STD that way. Yeah. But they get tested every week or every month or something, I've heard. No, I don't, if there's a reason they're tested every week, <laughs> I, don't know. Know, I, I don't want to go. They do. They get, they get tested every two weeks. Okay. Wow. So now we've all learned something about that. <laughs> that sounds expensive. And if it's all getting on the internet, like the tests are like 40 bucks each, you know? That's a that's a big overhead. I'm sure that would be covered. <laughs> that would be covered by someone. Oh, people make a lot of money from like um, downloading things or click click to watch things as well. There's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can make money online in very from you know various what, uh, different channels. <laughs> fair enough. You know a lot about porn. No, no, I know a lot. Well, you know, I know some things about porn, but I also know a lot about online money making and um, potential streams of money making. So there's a lot of options. And talking about some of um, Corey's writing, Corey, you you learned a few things just recently, like the end of last year. You do you want to tell people um, how we became to know each other and the article you wanted to do? Yeah, um, I, I like to doing controversial things and things that get people thinking and things that also you know have room for humor. And I I just thought to myself, you know, the vegan lifestyle. What do they think of 
<laughs> is sperm vegan? I just a question just occurred to me. And so I Googled it. I found some people talking about it, like, you know, on their own blogs and whatever. But I, I, I thought I would do an official inquiry because, you know, the world needs to know. Needs to know if, uh, you know, if this is something um, <laughs> that's going to, you know, make make a vegan's head explode when they think about the, uh, the potential uh, of, you know, for, for um, what what their lifestyle is and, and contradicting it. And anyway, so I, you know, I listened to your podcast, so I called you and we did an interview and uh, I, I realized that I was much, much more comfortable uh, doing these interviews over the phone than Skype. <laughs> so I was so, I was so shy and bashful talking with you. I was laughing at everything you said, and then I realized when I listened to the recording of the fact that I I didn't really get anything good out of you whatsoever, and we couldn't use you for the article, but I felt really bad, so I got back in touch with you. Anyway, the, the point is that a vegan, uh, uh, sperm is vegan, uh, depending upon your what your definition of vegan is. Now, uh, you are a vegan uh, because you don't believe in any cruelty to animals. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, it's not that I believe in cruelty <laughs> to animals. I mean, I I avoid it where I can. But um, the uh, the reason that I, that I'm uh, I, I would call myself probably 85 percent vegan, um, vegetarian. But um, the reason that I uh, am the way I am is because I just I just don't like the idea of mm. of eating animals. And I think there are a lot of people like me out there too who just don't want to be consuming or consuming, as you say, animal st animal things. So they don't want to put them in their mouth. And this is, boy, this is uh, <laughs> a hot this topic. Sperm. Sperm is, is, sperm, is sperm really a hot topic? Like, I know a couple of geeks <laughs> that are wanky and probably lick their hands after. But I don't, I don't think it's ever come up. I've heard it quite a lot. Maybe more girls get asked it than boys. Yeah, um, like, people non-vegans, I get asked about it. And especially if there's a whole group of, like, girls or boys that are just, like, egging each other on or something. I remember I was asked in an office, uh, an office I used to work, and all the girls are killing themselves laughing about it. And I'm like, yeah, I've heard it before. Because, you know, a lot of people are just trying to get you off, off balance or ask something that they think so hilarious that they think you've never heard before. And like I said to Corey with our Skype interview we did, yeah, I've heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so it's it's um, not only is the civic come from an animal, but it contains actual living organisms that, that are, are neither plants nor fungi. Uh, so does yeast. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. But, but yeast, oh, is yeast an animal? No. It's an organism. <laughs> Is sperm an animal? Hmm. See, these are good questions. Well, Actually, I think life questions. starts at 12 months. <laughs> 12 months? But before that, <laughs> you can flush it. I um so my my um opinion to Corey when he asked me this question was to say that it's all about consent. So whether or not uh, it, uh, uh, whether or not it actually comes from an animal, like as in a human animal, um, that it's not as if like a cow saying, "Here, I have my babies," or "Here, I have my milk." So it's completely different when it when it comes to. Um, some sexual practices where hopefully most people and all people are consenting adults or consenting at least. But if there are teeth involved, there's a, there's a change because I don't consent to that ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's Sorry. a whole vampire. That's Fair the enough. whole that, vampire thing. That's probably the oddest vegan <laughs> conversation that's ever happened. <laughs> How did that even come up, by the way? We were thinking about, my editor and I were thinking about weird things. And the other vegan thing that I thought of was um, if a Venus flytrap were <laughs> edible, could you eat that? Could a vegan eat a Venus flytrap? I think that's a pretty good, you know, some vegans don't eat, is it figs? Because a, a wasp has to lay out larvae? Yeah, maybe. I've heard is that, that. Is that it? Yeah. I love so, figs. I, I think most vegans would say no. But, you know, they're like... They're like the kind of guys that would be like, I refuse to show, uh, get chips or whatever. I refuse to buy something from McDonald's or use their toilet. 
but they'll shop at Coles, you know. <laughs> Coles, is, Coles is one of our um, major supermarkets here in Australia. Oh, well, the thing, I think the bigger issue is that you really can't, and you've said this a number of times, you can't be 100% vegan. I mean, if you drive a car, you mm. know, if you use a computer, there are some things, uh, uh, components um, yeah. that are animal-based. Fossil fuels, particularly petrol, is literally fish. Is it? Wow. You don't you don't know about the way like, are you a, you're Christian, right? So maybe Who? You. No. So anyway, back in the day, like way back before Gondwana, the oceans were just full of life. You know? Mm-hmm. And when the died they sunk to the bottom and that's what became the oil. It's science. So if you drive a car, it's not vegan. Mm, yeah, I thought it was in relation to tyres. What? Don't Rubber. people ca- carry on about tyres not being vegan? I've heard that. No, that's mm. probably... No, tyres are rubber. Something to do with the process of creating it. I can't remember. I can't remember that one. Right, so what I don't understand is uh, all the vegans who are yelling at other vegans for not being vegan enough, when it's impossible to be 100% vegan, and... Um, you know, being any percent vegan or aware or conscious of animal and animal suffering uh, is, I think, you know, it's a good thing. I, I don't, I, I hate all of the, um, all of the bickering online in the, in the comment sections and stuff. And even, you know, my article and everything that they started going at each other, and um, it's, 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 it's self righteous, and it's, um, you know, you're not really winning anyone over. Uh, if you if you're so if, if confrontational and and you 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 know accusatory and and you you just you combat it you just come at people and you're a murderer you know you're not going to change the world like that you're, I think I think I have, I have a better shot at changing the world by making carnivores laugh. Mm. Mm. There's definitely many different ways to convert people, and I definitely think it's better to. Um, you know, do a, a less offensive way of t- at least interacting with people. And yeah, you're right about all the trolls and comments online. It's really horrible. A lot of the stuff online. I agree. And you're really big into um, watching trolls um, troll each other, aren't you, Chris? <laughs> I'm big in making fun. It's really not fun. Ah. And what about um, Corey's uh, article? Did you read that? It's called, Is Your Sperm Vegan Friendly? I didn't read it. Did you was, that, was that in the email? That... Yeah. <laughs> that, that was in your homework. <laughs> that was the homework you didn't do. <laughs> but there's quite a few comments that um, Corey got for his article. What did you think about some of the comments, Corey? Like... Well, uh, the first one, that, for instance, um, is this for real? Was this a satire piece? Who got paid to write this garbage? I actually agree with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but was it a satire piece? Did you write it satirically? Or? No, no, no. I just like getting people to think. And if I happen to also, you know, uh, get them to laugh too, it's great. Um, but no, I, when, when you approach something that's it's almost like a ridiculous topic uh, and you, you actually approach it seriously, you get... Uh, sort of a satire from it, and um, I think I think that was pretty successful. And it, uh, the commenters obviously didn't agree at all. Uh, being vegan has nothing to do with the bedroom. If it did, that would mean all vegan men would never get sex unless they were attempting to procreate. And we would never masturbate. That is definitely not real. Uh, I don't. Who, who wrote that? Did they? Um, a guy called Josh. Josh Meckel. And this, this is the thing that freaks me out, like, other than the comments, that people can see who said these comments, and this links to their Facebook pages. Is and, that really? Yes, <laughs> and you can find out all this stuff about, about can you send me people. Email again? Hey. <laughs> Chris, you should probably look at this if you haven't seen it before. Um, the link for people playing at home is menshealth.com forward slash sex forward slash women forward slash vegans hyphen and hyphen sperm. Question mark. Oh, yeah, is that it? Yeah, okay. All right, cool. But if um, I just put in men's just, health, vegan, sperm. 
Yeah, or Google. even just Google the heading, which was, is your sperm yeah, vegan friendly? Should be or if you wanted to, you could go to CoreyLevitan.com. Or, yes. or Corey's website, that's correct. <laughs> and so, um, like, you... Oh, that's it. Who did the photo? Um, that was a stock photo we, uh, that my editor picked up somewhere. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Word. Yeah. <laughs> you have to you have to scroll right down to the comments, Chris, because there's all the advertising on that. I think it's just advertising on mine. Yeah. So okay, uh, let me let me ask you something else. Why do most vegans seem to lack a sense of humor? Because they're nubs. I think most people who are vegan, and this is this is my personal opinion, most people who are vegan kind of lack a little bit. Uh, well, most people that take veganism very seriously kind of lack a bit of personality. So, you know, it kind of becomes their whole life. So when you ridicule, ridicule something that's kind of their whole life, it's very offensive. You know? So it, it becomes their religion, in a it's, sense. Exactly. It's, so it depends yeah. what sort of people, Corey. Like, you know, I guess the people that are trolling online or the people that are commenting online the most, that's the sort of people you would see that are, are saying things or maybe not not taking things like with a little bit of tongue in cheek or however it's meant to be and plus keep in mind anything online you have no idea of how people mean it because you can't you can't see their body language you can't tell by the tone of their voice like i don't understand why most vegans seem to lack a sense of humor i think like i guess when i became vegan i just assumed that people would once i told them or educated them about things they weren't aware of that they'd become vegan too because it meant so much to me and I guess you can you can get caught up in the anger or I know a lot of people who are very angry I know a lot of people that veganism is another excuse for them to be angry and it's it's very hard you you know left of center on the very minority sort of scale especially you know Today, there's a lot of people that know about vegan food or vegan health or vegan fitness, but, like, the animal rights ethics, the actual, um, you know, things that I, I feel are really important, they're not really spoken about that much, and that can be, that can be really hard. And especially if, you're, if you are someone who, you full-time, you're an activist and you're doing this stuff all the time, and you're just seeing you're getting... Yeah. Um, brick wall after brick wall it, that's really hard and you know I've had to step away from the movement a bit the past few years just because I don't want to I don't want to be negative I don't want to be disillusioned by life or anyone in general and I definitely feel the movement's really really negative as most small minority movements are but I don't I, like I don't think it's negative I think there's people kind of steering the thing like I you know, that are kind of negative, but I don't necessarily think vegans or vegetarians are negative. I think they kind of feel like they're doing something positive and not getting enough recognition from it, so I think yeah. okay. a very, couple of very selfish... I see what people. the problem is. I, I just figured it out. Uh, the most <laughs> most vegans and vegetarians are, are probably like me. They just do it for personal reasons and for their own families. But the, the people who identify as vegans on, on the web are pretty much all activists. And if you're an activist, you're right. You're going to have that. I had this experience, actually, just this week. There's a, a lady out of uh, Washington named Rain Pearson, a really intelligent person. And um, I was, uh, she liked to this post, and then there was another uh, vegetarian, thank the uh, mediator's guide to how to treat vegetarians at Thanksgiving. That I wrote. She really liked that. I, I picked her up as a Facebook friend, so I'm watching her updates, and she's like, yelling at carnivores and just telling them, you know, if you think that you're moral, even if, if you believe in heaven and you believe you're actually going to go there, uh, you are sadly mistaken, you're a complete murderer, you know, and look, I, I told her I, in one of the comments, I said, I actually believe everything that you're, you're saying, but you, you kind of have to kind of, don't you think, um, not yell at people who don't think the way you do, maybe try other tactics and, and, and maybe, um, uh, maybe sort of uh, uh, fine-tune your, your message a little bit to get uh, mm. to, to get to a, a few of them rather than trying to change the whole system yourself. I mean, bravo, but I just, uh, I, I, I think you're taking on too much. 
Mm. I get blocked. Not only do I get blocked from Facebook, but I get blocked from even contacting her on Twitter to apologize. That's oh, wow. that's a vegan who I find on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So yeah, definitely. I don't know this person. Um, what, what was her name? <laughs> Rain Pearson. She's an environmental active. Uh, she's an environmental lawyer and and uh, and a. Uh, a vegan activist out of, out of Washington. She's a sweet person. I just wanted to apologize, so I'm doing that now over your podcast. Oh, good. I hope she needs it. Yeah. I'm, I'm also telling you, chick, mellow out. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of people, not just in the vegan movement, but just life in general, who are angry and who maybe don't have the best communication skills. So I don't necessarily think it's just a vegan issue. Yeah. No, you're right. But I answered my own question. I think the people who identify as vegan publicly are are doing so as activists, and you get your own set of uh, of agendas and problems when you when you try and uh, you know speak to an activist or, or expect a humor from an activist. You're right, but that's not what activists are. They're about one issue, and that's it. Well, mm. not necessarily one issue, but just right. ed- well, for me, it's about <laughs> educating what, what, people. What's your other issue? Who? Feminism. No, I know, I know, I listen to her. Feminism is her other issue. Yes, and well, I guess bringing that up, like the way certain people act online who are feminist or anti feminist, even, like definitely the message is completely either watered down or very strong for a lot of people, or the language is really bad. That I, d- I just definitely think every single person in whatever movement you are, vegan, environmental, feminist, whatever, like just be really aware of how you're communicating with people on online and offline. I think it just comes down to that. Chris, what do you think about that? Uh, I'm still shocked that about the porn stuff. <laughs> and, and plus, I was re- I was reading the Saint Kilda playing list for the year. So Saint was, Kilda is one of our tune out. Corey Saint Kilda is one of our <laughs> AFL teams here, Australian Football League, that Chris and I both follow. <laughs> and we were talking about AFL before you joined in the conversation. I was just letting Chris know about our new captain for the Bri- Brisbane Lions, the team that I follow, and our new a couple of new vice captains. So it's almost, yeah. it's almost. I, I am sorry about that. Time. I do. I do have a couple of very strong opinions about. Like, I fully believe in equality, and I think equality. The worst, the hardest road to equality is through, like, you know, there's like, kind of men's groups and feminists, and I yeah. think there's like no road to equality through feminism or men's groups. Men's groups saying, well men are bashed more in public or some shit and women's groups go, well, women are bashed more in the homes, you know, instead of just people not bashing each other, you know, like, seems to be very simple answers for a lot of things and everyone kind of gets stuck in the middle of, like, people that are very passionate about, you know, something that most people genuinely believe in. I think most people want to see animals not treated badly and most people want to, you know, see women treated equally, but kind of big gap between what actually happens and that. Definitely. Right. Now, but but most, when you're talking about most people, I'm thinking about the, the populace at, at large, and most people d- don't want to think about all of the uh, cruelty and the, the harm that their their actions are taking. They, they just don't want to... Oh, they don't want to think of it. Yeah, I don't think right. they want to think about it, but I think definitely on some level everyone wants to see animals treated nicely. Like even, you know people that go pig shooting or some shit have dogs that they love, you know? I don't, I don't think people want to see anything suffer. I think they feel bad if they kill the pig wrong and it, you know, limps around for 20 minutes before it dies. And I think, you know, most people don't want to see something suffer. And it's just kind of being well, my able to, point, my being point able to reach that, them in a different way. I also have another point, believe it or not, and then more than one point, and that's uh, uh, everybody has a certain level of hypocrisy. And, yeah. you know, it just, if you didn't take yourself that seriously, you could just look at it and say, oh, this is my hypocrisy. And, yeah. you know, uh, no move forward, me. learn from it. Look, when I see, a, I see a freaking spider in my house, I don't give a shit about its life. I don't, I'm not yeah. trying to trap it in a glass. I'm just trying, don't fucking bite my daughter. <laughs> Fuck you, you die right now. And, that, you know, I don't want to be like that, but that's just how I am in the moment. And, yeah. Um, 
And you kind of stuck there. If it was a rattlesnake, you'd kick it, right? <laughs> or shoot it if I had a gun, sure. Yeah. Well, you're American, so you, you got a gun. <laughs> no, I, I'm not a typical American. I belong with you guys. Uh, well, you know, Australia's got a pretty strong gun culture now. We were pretty, we were pretty good for a while, but you know, it's getting you're hard. welcome. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that. I, I blame Alex Jones. Everyone loves Alex Jones. Everyone's like not getting the kids vaccinated. Tell them Put, putting tell, covers over their computer camera. Tell people who Alex Jones is. Uh, he's like crazy internet guy. Yeah. I don't know. Everything's a conspiracy. Vaccines are a conspiracy. Nine mm-hmm. Eleven was a conspiracy. Obviously. Everything we got told that happened in 9-11 probably isn't true, but <laughs> not everything of it was a conspiracy. I do like a good conspiracy theory. Yeah. Would you believe... I was watching one just yesterday that my friend sent me about... They thought... They were saying the plane's a hologram, and the plane, like, flies behind a building, and they go, see, there's a glitch in the hol- hologram. Like, <laughs> fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah. There's a yeah, lot, but lot there's a lot... There's, um... You know, that whole Illuminati chemtrails, all, all that kind of crazy, um, you know, um, uh, paranoid thinking. I mean, that's led to a lot of anti-vaxxer sentiment here. We've got like a hundred people that came down with the measles, supposedly, and, and eradicated disease in America just by visiting Disneyland recently. Wow. And, um, I think I blame myself, really, because uh, I don't trust... I don't trust the government uh, when it tells me my water is safe to drink. I don't trust it when it tells me that, uh, you know, the pesticides and GMO corn are safe to eat. But I don't, I don't trust, I don't trust them not because I think they're hiding stuff from me because uh, they're out to get me. And I think, mm-hmm. I think uh, that science isn't there. Science hasn't yet identified the things that are really awful about the antibiotics and the milk and the stuff. But um, anti vaxxers take that to another level, and they. Um, they assume that the, the government is hiding stuff and that they have this secret agenda to vaccinate everybody and that they know vaccines cause autism. And um, so I kind of blame myself for... Because when you, when you think like that um, and you don't have a stable mind, it, it leads automatically to that kind of stuff. With to brain. thinking the worst, yeah. Both of you, you both have daughters of your own. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of scary stuff out there. Well, I'm living in Las Vegas. I'm just checking, you know, every night I go in her room and check that she's not stripping. (laughs) (laughs) She's still a bit young. (laughs) Oh, not for Vegas. (laughs) Really? (laughs) No, well, but yeah, but it is a scary thing. So, Corey, tell me about um, Las Vegas and the vegan scene now, because I've heard it's pretty great. Um. I, I've never seen any kind of vegan scene whatsoever except at the deli counter at Whole Foods until this <laughs> new new restaurant opened up called Violet's Vegan. This is the... I know you don't love this food. I listen to you a lot, so I know you don't like mock meat made out of Satan mm. and stuff like that, but we crave it because it's <laughs> kind of... You know, even though we don't eat meat, we still... Like, I go, I go by a, a barbecue and I... You know, my mouth waters. I don't want to eat this stuff because I don't want to mm. eat a corpse. But, but I still get hungry for it. F- and so they have all this uh, uh, comfort food. They have okay. uh, like beef kebabs and steak, and it, but it all tastes you know, exactly like the real thing. And it's so awesome. And, and there's nothing like been uh, uh, like this restaurant that's been here. There's about 50 places in LA where we're, where we're moved from, mm. and this is the first. Of any kind of, so we we went we got we went there every night this week to try everything on the menu. Oh, cool. um, What's it called? And it's called Violet's Vegan. And, Violet's uh, it, Vegan. It, yeah, it's named after Cindy Violet is the owner. She's a a big professional poker player in the U.S. Okay. We were there one night and Daniel Negreanu walked in. I mean, it's it's the poker players are are all going there. Of course, they know Cindy, but I see a lot. The tables are all full. They're about. Uh, 15 tables and they were full every time we went in and it's just really really great to see because there are a hell of a lot of people who live in Las Vegas hundreds and thousands who came from LA because the price of living in LA is just unreasonable Mm -hmm. you can't afford to own a house Mm -hmm. if you're not a multimillionaire in uh, an area of Los Angeles that doesn't have 
bars on the windows and gunshots outside. Mm. So there, there are hundreds of thousands of people who came to Vegas, uh, not because they didn't like the vegan options in Vegas, but because <laughs> they just couldn't afford to live it, to live there, and they wanted mm. to, to raise a family in a freaking house they could own. So uh, mm. we were all sitting around here, and every time a new restaurant opened in, on the Strip, it was a stupid steak place, or you know, oh. or another hamburger. Like we, we need fucking. 35 hamburger outlets. They just opened White Castle this week. I, I, no, I, need, mm. I need White Castle? No. Mm. Uh, anyway, so I, I would have ranted a lot more if this one <laughs> restaurant hadn't opened up and made me spend my family so happy. Well, it's I a really, really great place. Is, is it Steve Wynn that owns a lot of the area there? Yeah, Steve has a new wife who's a vegan, so he's a vegan by proxy. Yeah, because I've heard he's opened a lot of places or his menus are vegan. No, 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 no. What what it is, I I hate to denigrate anything that's positive that's done toward veganism, but Steve uh, added, made made sure there was one vegan uh, dish added to each of his restaurants in the Wynn and the Encore, which is, I think, about 30 restaurants or maybe 25 or something. And, you know, they're good. They're good. It's all good food. But it, it's not anything original. They're, they're made out of Gardein, which you oh, can okay. go buy at, at Whole Foods. It's not from scratch. It's from Gardein. Yeah. And when you're eating in a, in a restaurant in the winter, the encore, you're paying $30 a plate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you eat there once you go, okay, that's nice. And then you don't go back again. It's not a, it, it's not a regular stop for you. To, to go eat at the win if you're a vegan. Yeah, okay. I thought there was a lot more options on his, at his restaurants too, but you're just saying like one thing really. I think there's at least uh, there's. I know there's at least one. There might be one or two restaurants where there are more, but we we went to one of the main ones in the win about a year ago for our anniversary. Which is the only time you, we, we can afford thirty hour you know meals, and mm-hmm. uh, there was only uh, one entree for us, and it was good. It was like a, a chicken. Uh, marinara or something, and it was made out of. Uh, it, it was good, but you know, it's, it's not a place to. Uh, now that you know, we finally have it now with this one place, so we're we're really trying to keep it open by going there as often as possible. Mm, that's good. Can, got- we, can we hear more about Las Vegas for a minute? What's it like? Las Vegas. Uh, it's a, it, it's it's absolutely as insane as you think it is. <laughs> I mean, I just dro- I dropped my daughter at daycare uh, behind a a woman who's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's got like boots that are bigger than her head and and she's like wearing sunglasses at 7 in the morning she smells from the sh- cheap perfume she's wearing huge huge like heels of course you know she could be just a cocktail waitress but it's Vegas not necessarily it's a really really strange place we really never intended to live here for the rest of our lives but we mm-hmm. we fell into a situation <laughs> Where uh, with the, with the uh, the mortgage crisis that happened mm. uh, in, in America, where we we walked away from our house, and then the bank said, um, "Yeah, we don't want you to walk away." And basically, we're now living in our a house in a beautiful part of town um, for a pretty much the price of a of a lease of a of a, of a luxury car lease. Uh, every really. Month. It never wow. goes up. It never goes up. You know, for the next forty years, for the the only. The only uh, proviso is that we we have to live here. We we have to remain in the house. So it's mm. it's my home, and I have to learn to find the things about it that I don't completely despise. Look, if we if uh, look, I'm from New York and from LA. If we if we were to move to either of those places, we'd be uh, you know trying to raise our daughter in, in an apartment in a horrible part of town with mm. a fat woman upstairs bowling. And, um, you know, God knows what the public schools are like. Um, so, yeah, no, we have to live here. But it really is, it's such a trip. There's there's freaking, there's slot mach- there's uh, video poker machines in the supermarkets. Huh. In the supermarkets. Wow. Yeah, they're, and, and, they're, and they're all, I think they're all full of the same, like, stereotypical people. It might actually be the same people at every one. I think they might have cloned them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're all... 75 years old and they're all smoke mm. and they're you know they're you know they're putting in their their uh, social security checks into these video poker machines mm. and it's like people don't you, you don't even notice it when you live here long enough it's like oh yeah there's the video poker section of the supermarket mm. it's so sad yeah. to me wow mm. I, I just can't imagine living it's just so beautiful just outside of las vegas and what's the lake near the dam what's Lake that called Mead. Oh, so, so beautiful, and you can 
How far is it to the Grand Canyon? Um, it's about two and a half hours to a, yeah. to the bad side. But look, I mean, if that's beauty to you, I mean, you know, there's just look at the rover from Mars. I mean, it's the same terrain. Yeah. I I like my mountains to be green. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, we'll, I, we'll sw- we should swap one time. The mountains just out the front of my house are green as shit. Except for the snow. Well, it's not. I'm I'm down like far enough south where it doesn't snow, snow. It's oh, just, okay. Mm-hmm. Hits were you the in and melts. Were, were you in Japan for the tsunami? No, I only moved here six months ago. Wow. So did, did you see any damage when you got there? Well, I'm in Osaka. It's way, way away. But, you know, okay. in Tokyo, they don't drink from the water supply and shit like that. Like, Still, I think wow. It, it, is pretty, it is pretty bad, but, you know, it's Japan. Kind of everything, everything's kind of, like, looks a little bit damaged unless you're in the nature. And then it's just perfect nature. Like, nobody looks after the nature like Japan. Mm. You know, it's like city, 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 and then you come to a road, and on the other side of the road's a bush that... No one's ever walked into. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Do you feel like a like a a zoo uh, animal on display there sometimes? Yeah, all the time. Everyone everyone comes up and talks to me. I like my friends are all like seventy five year old dudes who hated white people back during the war, you know. And then mm. they've kind of like they've found a guy that's not mean to them or some shit, and they like cling to me like glue go to coffee with them, can't speak Japanese, they can't speak English, but, you know, somehow we all get along and drink coffee together, and one of them came and helped me lift. I had, I made I made a set of doors, but I made them way too heavy. I used 45, like, 45 mil timber the whole way through the door, so it's mm. fucking heavy, and um, I got this old guy who's maybe 65 to come and help me. He's, he's in pretty good shape. He, you know, they don't... They don't ruin their bodies like we do in the West, but mm-hmm. um, they had to get one of his other mates to help me put it on. I, f- I kind of felt sorry for him, but at the same time, he's my only mate. Like, what could I do? <laughs> <laughs> we talk to each other through translator. <laughs> and they get more surprised every day at how much better I'm getting in Japanese. Oh, cool. Yeah. I now that I remember to-, to say please. I visited Tokyo in, in uh, 2000. I remember I, I didn't get the culture at all, and I, I studied up the language and everything. I went, when, when I was single, trying to hook up with Japanese women, and uh, the phrase that I learned was, Watashi wa bakana American, which is, hi, I'm a stupid American. And wow. I thought, you know, self, self-deprecating self humor, which is, like, that would be it, and I would they, show they them that it. every one of them, to a T, said, uh, said, oh, no, who told you say that? That's not good. <laughs> See, they, insulting yourself is just not funny to them. They don't understand. It, uh, it's all about honor. Yeah. Yeah. And How did you go with of, the ladies then, of... Corey? What? <laughs> How did you go with the ladies then? <laughs> Doesn't sound like the best pickup line. No, it wasn't. So we went We went to uh, Thailand uh, t- uh, two weeks uh, earlier than intended, and uh, I more than made up for my lack of... Uh, Six <laughs> my life is proud success in Japan. Really? <laughs> I, I, I'm married. I, I think it'll be very easy to pick up here. Really? Yeah, very easy. Like, well, I, co- I'm guessing shop, you're not... Coffee shop girls try and pick you up, you know? I'm guessing you're not five foot five with a voice uh, that looks like... That sounds like you just inhaled helium for the past I, hour. I'm fat. <laughs> you're fat? Yeah. They, it, it is he fat? Um, it depends who you compare him to. I'm like, I'm not skinny. Put it that way. I'm not skinny and I'm not fit like I was 25. Like I'm a 32-year-old Australian. No one like, is, though, Chris. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm a 32-year-old Australian. i got a belly, you know. You sound like such a fit person. I can, I can uh, picture you right now just like with your shirt off and with a whip. <laughs> and like, you know, just... Uh, with a whip? Riding, riding a horse. I don't know. Just whatever. I think aren't all Australians fat? Everyone goes, oh, I think I surprised you know it's fatter. That's I've heard that there's a lot more of an obesity epidemic in Australia now. It used to be America in the in the front, but now I think we've taken over or something yeah, silly. I, I blame Chico Rolls and Dare Ice Coffee. Speaking of the Saints, <laughs> um, 
Corey. Well, well after dinner, I'm after thinking. my dinner tonight, I've actually, I actually might have tipped the scales back in favor of American obesity. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know, I say it all the time. Like 18 years ago, when I first became vegan, there wasn't as many um, great vegan alternatives, especially like desserts and sweets. And now there's just so much stuff, which is did, really. Did good you lose weight then too? Like. The less education you have about veganism, the easier it is to lose weight. Um, well, I did because I wasn't um, having dairy and a lot of like ice cream and chocolate. I guess that's why I would have lost weight originally because we didn't mm. have ice cream and chocolate, vegan chocolate, eighteen years ago. Yeah. Oh, oh, there was one brand actually that was okay for ice cream, but they was it so good? No, it was before so good days. Really? I yeah. think So Good's been around since I was a kid. I remember yeah. Mum getting that for me. Not on the ice punishment. cream, though, I don't think. Really? Yeah. It was a different brand. Or maybe they just didn't stock it. But yeah, there's. Def- and see, this is. I just remember. Uh, I, I remember that they had vegetarian stuff uh, when I was a kid in New York, but it, like, it was like everything had spirulina in it. Spirulina. Spirulina, yeah. <laughs> spirulina. It was like it, uh, everything was as gross as possible. For the for the vegetarian market and green, rosa green. <laughs> but it's you know there's there's a lot more alternatives which is really good. But it's like people that go vegan to lose weight or to be hot or to get fit or something, and they still eat the processed food. So like, much processed sugar. That's the worst part about being vegan in Australia. Yes, everything's like, processed. But in Melbourne, because the food was so like. If you ate out in Melbourne, the food's so rich, you kind of eat half your meal and you can't mm. eat for a day, you know? Melbourne's lost, pretty great. For I lost heaps of weight in Melbourne. And because you, what about because you're walking around more in Melbourne? Because they actually have really good public transport, like the train. Are you sure you're not walking around more because you're on holidays? <sighs> Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I always walk more on holidays, but I, don't, I didn't notice myself walking around more. Okay. That. I could see the losing weight if you if you if you went raw. I could see uh, cutting your calories based on that, but not if you just went vegan. In fact, I, I don't think I've lost any weight since I since I went vegetarian 20 years ago. And a lot of people are putting on weight now when they become vegan because they you know it's the whole thing that gets promoted. Instead of having dairy cheese, you can have all these fake um, vegan cheeses. Um, or instead of having animal meat or something, their flesh, you can have all these other alternatives, and it's all really highly processed, a lot of it. And so right. people, people are having stuff that's, you know, before they were vegan, you know, animal parts, non-ethical sort of stuff, but then they're still having processed stuff or stuff that's not good for them, really. And the sodium, the sodium is off the charts. Mm. You, if you have high blood pressure, you just, you just can't be a vegan unless you eat raw or cook really? your own yeah. stuff. I have low blood pressure actually a lot of the time, <clears throat> but um yeah it's it's definitely something people need to look at and this is this is one of my things about how veganism is marketed, you know it and you know a lot of my vegan friends they don't care about the food or their health because it's all about the animals you're doing it to help the animals not kill or harm or abuse animals. Right, and, but who is it marketed by? Most of these vegan brands have been bought by corporations a long time ago, and so they sit around boardrooms and they say, okay, how do we get this product out to the most people possible? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and they think of what are the ways to, uh, so they'll they'll just do whatever the buzzwords are, you know? Like, I see gluten-free on stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, what what does that even mean? If it doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, wheat or uh, grain in it, it's not going to have gluten anyway. Duh, my, my butter has no gluten in it. Duh. (laughs) <laughs> I, I was with some non-vegan friends one day and we just like they were at the bottle shop going through the bottle shop and I just got some chips because it was like a holiday public holiday everything was shut and chips like crisps so it's just like um, potatoes oil salt and um, one of my friends they're like oh is that gluten free and I'm like <laughs> it has potatoes in it <laughs> what? but are they celiacs what? though or are they just doing it as a trend I think it's weird I think it's weird that gluten became about, a trend. Yeah, I think they were confused well, about whether my veganism and gluten free is the same thing because I try not to have gluten products a lot of the time. Can I ask why? Because I feel better when I don't. And really? Yeah, and um, yeah, and I just prefer a lot of the other stuff. Look, if you have celiac disease, you die when you yeah. eat wheat gluten. 
and you pretty much know you have celiac disease because you go to the bathroom and you're seeing intestine in the toilet. Mm. I mean, uh, it, that doesn't mean that if you don't have a, that that if you don't have a gluten sensitivity, that gluten is bad for you. Um, I mean, there might sort of be grades gradations of it where you almost have celiac disease, but you don't quite, you're not diagnosed, and, that, and then it would be a great idea for you not to have gluten. But I can't believe the whole freaking population is on that scale. Yeah, it seems I mean, like everyone, it's like, uh, what's name? It's really popped up. It's a very trend, like it's an untrend um, definitely. condition. Yeah, it's like, it's like carbs were 15 years ago. Oh, carbs. Carbs is the only evil to eat. That one I think, still I, is. And because of all I think the carbs are big now, aren't they? Yeah. Everyone's into carbs, like 80% carbs. Carb the complex. They, yeah, they say complex. You know, as long as your body has some uh, energy to expend and breaking it down, it's good. So, like, the brown rice is good, the white rice is good. Oh, but no, now that's not even true because of the arsenic levels. White rice, <laughs> white, whoa, white whoa, rice whoa. has been better for us the whole time. <laughs> There's white rice, rice. White rice doesn't have arsenic, right? White rice has less arsenic than, than brown. But still has um, arsenic. I literally live on rice. Sometimes I take like um fiber. You know, most vegans take like a multivitamin. I take like a fiber substitute <laughs> for so much rice. Because it's white like, rice, yeah. Everything's everything's rice in Japan. Doesn't matter what it is, it's rice. And if you're a vegan, rice and sesame oil. You know, bit of soy. Chris, I don't see any. It, I don't see. I don't see any. Uh, 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 connection at all between the fact that all you eat is rice and the fact that you're fat. There's no yeah. connection at all. <laughs> Maybe it's and the sesame meal. oil. The only thing you can flavor rice with to make it nice is soy sauce and sesame oil. Whack. Sesame oil goes straight to your hips. <laughs> so really, I mean, there's so little that's not a fish product in Japan that you really have to sit down at a restaurant, order rice, and that's it, and just eat that nah, I can No, nah, I can have like tofu and sesame oil and soy sauce or, <laughs> you know, there's heaps of shit you can have but, you know, do you really want to eat kelp? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really that actually, great. <laughs> actually, one thing that I... Initially, I was, like, a little bit iffy about their vegetables, you know? Like, you kind of just assume everything's frozen, but they have so many, like, hydroponic setups here where they have, like, hydroponic tomatoes. Easily mm. the best tomatoes I've ever had. Wow. In Japan. Easily. And even... I had a friend here from Africa, and, you know, Africa has lovely... If you can get fruit and veg, Africa has lovely fruit and veg. I don't know whether you've ever heard of, heard of that. I haven't been there. I was made in Africa, but I haven't been there. You were made in Africa? Yeah, really? in um, Zimbabwe. Wow. Mm. Sounds wow. Racist. Yeah. My parents used to, they lived there for like f- that, five was it or Ro- seven years. Or Rhodesia, it, yeah, sorry, Rhodesia. Yeah, Rhodesia. Yeah, wow. Rhodesia. Wow. And yeah, so... They loved it. That's still, my parents both say it's the best place they've ever been to travel. You are the most worldly person that I've ever heard of who has never been to the UK. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't been to the UK or Europe yet. (laughs) Europe even, wow. No. How are you so worldly? But your name's Kosh. Yeah, I want to go to Europe. Why not? I do want to go to Europe. Oh, you want to. And I want to go to the UK, but, you know, the cold thing, that puts me off a bit, so I have to... Can I make a suggestion of a very cheap way to get to London Mm -hmm. from Australia? You know, you can get $230 Jetstar flights. Can you? I didn't know that. To Osaka, and then from Osaka to Vladivostok is very cheap, like 87 bucks, Mm. right? There's a train you can get that's a real shit train that's just chock a block full of people that goes from Vladivostok all the way to St. Petersburg for like 70 bucks. I do love trains. And then from St. Petersburg to Berlin is a very cheap flight as well. I had a friend who got there for under 700 bucks. That's cool. This literally, sounds- l- literally took him a month to get there, but... You know, well, you got that. I really want to travel around the world by train one day. There's this amazing website that I love called seat61.com, and it's all about train trips or other ways to get there. And I wonder if your friend was on there, because it sounds like the sort of trips that they they show how to do. No, I think he's just a tight ass, and he's worked out the shortest way to get there. I've heard he, reckon, he can he go wants and... to do a He wants to do a tour from... 
New York and somehow get from New York to Washington and then Washington all the way across the eastern seaboard touring his band along the train line. You know, yeah. so every time, like, they jump on the train and hire guitars when they get there. That's a great idea, but it's really expensive for trains in the States. No, no, uh, like, they jump on the, what's the name? They're all, like, train kids, though. They love uh, riding the train for free. Yeah. Freight trains? Freight trains. They love it. Freighters, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, oh, what was like, that guy? Like, Woody Guthrie. Yeah, that book, Bound for Glory. I read that what? book when I was on trains in Thailand or somewhere. It's a great book. Good we on. have a name for your friends. We call them hobos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, a great idea. Good on them. Good luck. Welcome to the Frugal Travel Podcast, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually think Just they name a city you want to go to. Yeah, literally. He, he went from, um, he was stuck in South America and got a um, fishing boat back to Australia. Wow. That's crazy. I've heard that I'm um, going. How do you even? Containers. How do you even ask someone for that? So, someone just offers, maybe I don't know. <laughs> what do you show up with a boat and the dude's like, "Hey, do you want to lift home?" <laughs> <laughs> I well, thought you were never gonna ask. You just go and see who goes where and make friends. I yeah. would, but if you get onto cargo ships, supposedly I've heard of a few people that travel. On cargo ships, it's not luxury accommodation, obviously, but you can pay like really, really cheap amounts to go where the cargo ships go. Mm. They actually know you're on the ship. Yeah. Do you have to work? No. There's some way yeah. you do as well. No, that sounds horseshit. You'd want to work. They get paid pretty well, I think. I don't know. Because it's just like throwing a bucket of water over the deck, right? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been... I'd, no, I don't think I'd be cut out for that sort of work. It's like being on a cruise ship except shitter. Yeah, and you have to work. Cruise ships, you don't have to work. And you do all the crappy jobs, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah. Where do you want to go, Corey? Where do I want to go? I don't know. I want... Where do I want to go? I, I'd love to be in Australia. I went to a, a psychic for an article that I was doing once, and he told me uh, a couple of really, really insightful things that made me think that he was on to something. Uh, and then he also told me that uh, I would live in Australia. Mm. It's a great place to live. I completely disagree. Australia is really expensive. It's expensive, yes. <clears throat> Australia is easily the most expensive place in the world. I had a friend who lives in uh, Norway right now which is kind of the place you always think of as being the most expensive place, and she thinks Norway's cheap. It depends. Huh. If you're in Alaska or somewhere like that, I'm sure that's more expensive, because then it gets... Alaska's right next door to Canada. It's meant to be really expensive, because they don't grow a lot of their own stuff. You have to get in a lot of things shipped in. But doesn't, doesn't what is more expensive always change when the currency changes? Because I remember when we went to Japan... It was the most expensive place we'd ever heard of. It was like mm. a, the equivalent of ten dollars for a cup of coffee. And, Whoa, uh, and really? It's not that way. Any, it's not that way anymore. But I think certainly not that way anymore. Yeah, the currency it's about, change. Yeah, it's about eighty cents US for a dollar. Right. I think. So it doesn't yeah. make Australia intrinsically an expensive place. It just means it. It just is sort of like a, a scorecard on what on what the what the exchange rates are. I definitely yeah. think, I do agree with Chris that it is expensive. Like, it really is. All, any, anyone I've known, all my travel people from overseas, travel companions, friends, whatever, they, when they come to Australia, they're completely shocked by our prices. Even, you know, just to stay at a, um, like a dorm or a, a backpackers is like $70 a night, Australian dollars. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Like, that's ridiculous. You can stay in, and I know, and this is my thing too, because I was in Asia for so long and I got used to the, the prices in Asia, and it's still shocking to come back to Australia and pay $10 for a meal or more than $10 for a meal. So, yeah, $10 is cheap in Australia. That's a yeah. good meal. Yep. But in Japan, you know, like, I spend maybe 4 bucks for lunch, right? I got two two slabs of tofu. This is, it's a pretty boring lunch. Two slabs of tofu, two things of natto, a really big rice, and, like, this weird pickly thing, and that's the only shit I can eat on the menu, so I get two of everything. Mm -hmm. And it costs, like, 4 bucks, right? Mm, that's good. That same thing in Australia. I remember paying 5 bucks just for rice. <laughs> really? 
Yeah. Like, you have to go to the bulk. Like, I, I shop the at... The bulk club? My bulk, bulk. Like, oh, okay. um, you know, the Indian grocery, the Asian grocery, the Tongan grocery, all those sort of places. I always get bulk food from those places. Yeah. What's the Tongan grocery? Tongan grocery. Like, Tongan people... Yeah, what do they sell? Like green bananas? And just like a just like a fruit and veg store, but they have a lot of other other things as well. Like bulk. Do they have Do they have tongue and cheek? Sorry. Ah. Tongue and cheek. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they do actually. I don't. The Tongans don't do humour. <laughs> it's very, they're very, they're very serious about not doing humour. They're I, very I, vegan. Yeah, I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a bunch of friends at a Tongan, and they they just don't do humour. So, anyway, Chris, move on. I found <laughs> I found out from our friend Jeremy, who's over in New Zealand at the moment. He's going to join us probably on our next podcast, so we can talk about his adventures. Sounds good. He's, so he's push biking around New Zealand, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think he's just met a friend from the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure he said he was from the Netherlands. A lady friend? No, a male friend. So. Oh, that's good. I've been trying. I want him to come over here because there's this girl who really loves Breaking Bad that the lives mo- on my street. The show. And, um, yeah, you know Breaking Bad, the TV show. Yeah. The best best TV show ever made, according to most people. Uh, I agree. I would. Do you agree I with that? Argue, I don't actually. I would I'm, argue that. hundred percent. hundred percent. I'm a Trailer Park Boys guy. But then Breaking Bad. <clears throat> great, great show. Anyway, Jeremy looks like Jesse. You the, so, yeah. Okay. What are you talking about? Look at the very last scene of Breaking Bad. It's I, Jeremy. I liked the first two seasons and I just got over <coughs> it. So yeah, I haven't did seen it. the last it one. Went a bit, do you remember that TV show Weeds? Yeah. How, how it Love just that. lost something. Just lost something after like, I don't know, after Was she like started hanging out with the international drug smugglers. Was it all... Oh, yeah. yeah. Was it all when... And it kind of, like, went downhill. Was it all when all the people were striking in L.A. or something? Because that's what happened with Friday Night Lights. Like, it was really good, and then they had the strike, and then the writing was just ridiculous. Did you say Friday Night Live? Saturday Night Live? Lights. Friday Night Night Lights. Lights. No, I don't think it's the case with HBO or Showtime, because uh, they they could choose to do a new season whenever they want. Hmm. Friday Night Lights is one of the best TV shows, Chris. You should check it out. It's about college football in um, down Dillon, Texas. Wow. Does it have heaps of muscles? I think that's why you like it. No, I just... I really like the characters, the character development. And Connie Britton's in it. Do you know her? Is that Mul- the girl from Community? Mm, I don't know about Community. <laughs> She's also in Nashville at the moment. Loving Nashville TV series, and she was in the first season of American Horror Story. Uh, you, you watch way more TV. The only reason I saw Breaking Bad is because when I first moved to Japan, I had nothing to do for a month, so I've watched like every episode. I do love TV series, yeah. Dramas, I like a good drama. Fair enough. Is it a drama? I'm big on comedy. Yeah, your comedy's not, your humor's not the same as mine, so it has to be like. A certain type of comedy for me to like, like UK comedy, probably. Fair enough. Like the original Office, that was good. Yeah, it was better than our version, but our version was pretty good too. I didn't mind yours. Yeah, actually. I, I like yeah. the U- US version better. Like I love Ricky Gervais, but I thought he's great. He he kind of just made it too awkward, mm. you know. Oh, I love that though. I was I just complaining was um, recently about. Did you ever see the show Rake, Corey? There was a you no. an Australian show called Rake. Richard Roxburgh, I think, is the guy who was in it. And then you guys remade it, and it was painful. Like it just missed all the great parts of it. But yeah, was it funny? No, it wasn't. It was like it was sort of maybe more satirical humour or subtle humour when it was Australian, and they just made it over the top humorous in the states. I don't believe Hollywood's ever remade something uh, and made it worse. That's a ridiculous statement. I, I don't... You mean made it better? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> have, have you seen the remake of Karate Kid? No. Not Worst sure. remake ever. It was worse than when Madonna did Bye Bye Miss American Pie. Like, it was fucking <laughs> awful. <laughs> That's a big call. <laughs> and so what's everyone up to the rest of the week? Or next week? Corey? Um, going for pizza for dinner? Oh, or Chris? Corey? Yeah. Corey? No, Corey, go on. Um, I have to figure out how to make money to pay for to go to this vegan restaurant every single night of next week, too. 
I have to figure out what articles to write so that I could I could raise the fifty dollars a night to take my family. Can it, can it just be any any topic? Yeah. Or does it have to be um, specifically for health? No, it really it could be anything as long as uh, it has something to teach people. It's I've got a funny element, and that like from the beginning, I if I'm in it myself, I, I there's an arc where. I learn something, or I become different, or or whatever, you know. Just I change in some way. But uh, it, I have an editor who's uh, who's really like a co-writer, and we just have these brainstorming sessions where we just think of the wildest shit that, like, you know, would never be publishable, and then we sort of tame that into something that would that Men's Health would run. It's really a fun process. Oh, yeah. Corey, well, I have I have one for you: imaginary boyfriend. Have you heard you of mean, that? No. It's oh, uh, it's all it's all the rage at the moment. If you're a girl who's single and you're being harassed by your parents or your friends or a guy, um, and you just want to pretend you have a boyfriend, you can sign up to create your own boyfriend, and you'll get a hundred texts, um, photos, all this stuff. You should. Uh, I, there's quite a few. Oh, media. that's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go look that up. <laughs> there's quite a few uh, media outlets who have already written about it, but it's like it's really full on. And um, no, but if I could figure out a way to sort of like you know shoehorn myself into it, like the you know the cuddling thing, it, it, that's already been out for a couple of years already. But well, do you know in Japan they have like the the population is declining by about half over the next, say, 40 years or 50 years because of women don't want to have kids. I've heard that. Because mm. men are assholes in Japan. Guys don't want to date <laughs> women because they're a pain in the ass. And no one's getting married. No one's having kids. They go to they pay like 70 bucks to cuddle someone for 15 minutes. And they no one's having strippers. sex in Japan, I've heard, too. <clears throat> What's that? No one's having sex in Japan, too. Well, people are having sex. There's an area just near my house. It's like the brothel area. It's yep. about a kilometre wide, full of houses the size of a room, you know, which is a brothel. It's amazing. So there's like, you know, 300 brothels in the space of Whoa. a kilometre. It's crazy. Well, I think we might wrap it up there, guys. Thank you to Corey Leverton today for joining us. It was a pleasure. Good. And, uh, Good. Sorry we I think, I think we should definitely do it again. Because yes, we'll get you in another time, Corey. I'm not in an amazing great. headspace, and I thought you're hilarious, so I'd love to riff with you. I think <laughs> it'd be great. And you well, can um, t- since we didn't have the visual, I am standing here naked, <laughs> and um, so I would cool. I would um, just love love for you to see that. Yes, yeah, sorry um, everyone that we didn't sounds get the five visual with, five. with this. <laughs> if you um, is there, is, every, is everything in proportion? <laughs> no, it's actually not. I have a size ten and a half foot. Wow! And you know, you know what that means. Congratulations. Means that you means have I have, good I have feet. very good balance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a weevil. You cannot knock me over. If you want to Ma- check out Ma- more Ma- of what Corey does, check out menshealth.com. Um, yeah, go to coreylevitan.com. That's that's what all my articles are. And coreylevitan.com, which is c o r e y l e v i t a n dot com. If I think any- what you guys are doing is awesome. I think you have a really good chemistry together. When Thanks, Corey. Uh, when Chris isn't like watching something else during the podcast, <laughs> and. Uh, I look forward to listening to you, even if I'm not on again. I, I, I think you, you do a good, great job. You're very entertaining. Thanks, Yeah, Corey. thanks, dude. I think you'll definitely be on again. <laughs> and this is what more of what more of what the vegan community needs, is people with a fucking sense of humor, really. And if anyone's interested in joining us, send me an email. Go to vivalavegan.net in the contact section and tell me what we can talk about. Did you sign up a fake boyfriend, Lee Chantel? No, I don't do. I don't do anything on my phone, and like that sort of stuff just freaks me out. All that stuff. I meet heaps of lovely guys all the time, so you know I don't have a problem with meeting people. Can I just ask? I mean, what your situation is? I mean, because you put yourself out there. I mean, do you? And you're you're always going to these different areas of the world and spending time with people, and you have like a million friends. I mean. Do you, do you have boyfriends? Or do you have, like, one in every place? How do you work it? 
Um, I'm currently looking for a um, compatible ve- a vegan, potentially male. So Do they have to be vegan, or no, are they? They could actually they be vegan curious. They don't actually have to be vegan <laughs> anymore. I, if you'd asked me ten years ago, I would have said they had to be vegan. But now I just, I would just like to find someone who's a nice person. I it's, can have. It's a, just such a shit gene pool, like. And I can have I, a good I, conversation. I always had a very, a very strict. They have to be vegan policy, or at least vegetarian, and they only eat vegan around me. But such a narrows. shit gene pool, like, how do you meet someone? It just narrows everything down so much. Lee, yeah. Is it Lee or Lee Chantel? Lee Chantel. <laughs> so not Lee. I can't call you Lee. No. Oh, I get LC quite a lot. LC. All right. So when you're sitting around with your boyfriend who's not a vegan, okay, and you want to get serious, aren't you looking at that mouth every second of the day and wondering what it just ate? Mm. I have dated non-vegans in the past, and they'll have to brush their teeth before we start kissing or something, and yeah, it does freak me out. It, really? Don't you think, it, don't you think it, would, it, would, it would sort of gross him out, or it would get on his nerves, that you, every time he wants to kiss you, he has to, he has to go brush his teeth? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Apparently, this is what I figured out. It, it is actually vegan to be a cannibal. As long as it's, as long as it's consenting, and you, you give your arm, or whatever, or your, your dick to, uh, to be eaten... Uh, and and it's a, a consenting act, and it's it's a, it's vegan. Wow, that's you know they call it the long pig ride in Papua New Guinea, where Lee Chantel's from. The people people are the long pigs. We yeah, people about like this last no time. the the ones yeah. yeah. It's just because uh, I recently read um, God is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens, and then read it again. I love that the, book. Yeah, I love so that. So good. I haven't it's, read it. How does he fit so many facts into one book? I hope everyone's learned something from this <laughs> podcast today. Yeah. Well, um, I hope everyone who's listening to this is reading a very good book this week. And um, thank you, Corey, again for joining us. My and, pleasure, again. <laughs> and Chris and I will both see you here the next time. And we may have a guest, we may not. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Take Cheers, care. Thank you.